Fang was an ordinary small town in a northern province of Chiang Mai, situated on the banks of a river. It made a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. A few barges, rafts, and sometimes even a large sailboat could usually be found moored at Fang. But all that was long ago, before the creation of the Trial of the Channel. Now, once a year, the river is crammed with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around, hoping to witness the breaking of an ancient tradition and see a victor in the trial of champions. Deep in the hillside, behind the town, lies a challenge created by a powerful baron of Fang called Sukhumit, a labyrinth filled with deadly tricks, traps and loathsome monsters from which there is only one exit. Each year, warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the trial of champions. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk. The prize is great. A purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. This year, you will attempt what has become known as the walk. Attracted to it for the simple fact that nobody has ever yet emerged victorious. In the morning, you see Baron Sukhumvit himself, with five others standing proudly in line, the violet scars displayed for all to see. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs, a sleek elven woman with golden hair and feline green eyes, a man covered head to foot in iron-plated armor, with a plumed helmet and a crested shield, and another cloaked in black robes with only his dark eyes showing between the swords of his black face scars. A hush falls over the crowd as Baron Sukhumvit steps forward holding six bamboo sticks. You draw one from his outstretched hand and read the word, fifth. The knight enters first. He salutes the crowd before disappearing into the tunnel. He is followed half an hour later by the elf, then a barbarian and the dark assassin. Next, it's your turn. But before embarking on your adventure, we must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses. You have in your possession a sword, a shield, and a backpack for carrying provisions for the trip. You have been preparing for your quest by training yourself in swordplay and exercising vigorously. To see how effective your preparations have been, dice will be rolled to determine your skill, stamina and luck scores. Or, if you wish to begin your adventure immediately, you can choose between three ready-made adventurers. You can choose to be Alaric Ironwood, whose approach in battle is simple and direct. To charge forwards, huge shoulders whirling his sword manically about his head, chopping left and right with such force and speed as to quickly put any enemy off getting too close. And should they ever manage to sneak a blow in under this onslaught, Alaric's impressive physique will normally just brush it off, as if it were a scratch. Morning Fang himself, many moons ago, Alaric is a hero to the locals. His mother still lives there, a diminutive woman who makes her living as a seamstress. <laughs> and quite how she produced such a gigantic warrior no one quite knows. But the popular theory is that somewhere down his ancestral line, giant blood runs in his veins. Alaric's initial skill is eight. His initial stamina is 23. And his initial luck is seven. 
Alaric also carries a potion of strength that gives two opportunities to restore his stamina points to their initial amount. Lastly, before you begin your quest, you are given enough provisions for 10 meals. When you eat a meal, your stamina score will increase by four points. But don't forget, your stamina can never exceed the initial amounts you've just set. You have a long way to go, so use your provisions wisely. During your adventure, you'll enter into combat a number of times, and the further you go, the tougher your opponents will be. Combat takes place over several rounds, and your attack strength is based on yours and your enemy's skill scores. For each round of battle, we'll roll two dice for you and two for your opponent, adding the results to your skill scores. These are your respective attack strengths. Whoever's attack strength is the highest wins that round of combat. If you both have the same attack strength in a round, then it will be a tie. In some battles, you can take an opportunity to escape. But beware. If you do run away, your opponent will automatically score one hit on you as you flee costing you two stamina points. So be sure you have enough. Such is the price of cowardice. You are playing using the new battle system where the battle takes place over three rounds. Your sheer battle-hardened nature will mean you'll always win the battle after the three rounds, but every round you lose will cost you two stamina points. So be careful. Losing all your stamina will still be fatal. At the start of each round, you'll have a short time to decide to fight or to build up your stamina by eating your provisions or taking a potion, if you have one. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you take one final deep breath of cool, fresh air before turning to pass between the stone pillared gateway into Sukhumvit's corridors of power to face unknown perils in the walk through the mighty Baron's Death Trap Dungeon. The clamour of the excited spectators gradually fades behind you as you venture deep into the gloom of the cavern. Large crystals hang from the tunnel roof at 20 metre intervals, radiating just enough soft light for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the near darkness, you begin to see movement all around. Spiders and beetles crawling up and down the chiseled walls disappear quickly into cracks and crevices as they sense your approach. Rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water drip into small pools with an eerie plopping sound which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist and dank. After walking slowly along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall to your left. On it, there are six boxes, one of which has your name painted on its lid.
The lid of the box lifts off easily, and inside you find two gold pieces and a note written on a small piece of parchment addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message, which says, Well done. At least you had the sense to stop and take advantage of the token aid given to you. Now I can advise you that you will need to find and use several items if you hope to pass triumphantly through my death trap dungeon. Signed, Sukumbit. Memorizing the advice on the note, you tear it into tiny pieces and continue north along the tunnel where you come to a junction. A white arrow painted on one wall points west. On the floor you can see wet footprints made by those who entered before you. It's hard to be sure, but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while one decided to go east. Ahead, you can see a large obstruction on the tunnel floor. Although it is too dark to make out exactly what it is, the wet eastbound footprints you have been following carry on towards the obstruction. You see that the obstruction is a large brown boulder-like object. You touch it with your hand and are surprised to find that it is soft and spongy. Your sword easily pierces the thin outer casing of the giant spore ball. A thick brown cloud of spores bursts out of the ball and envelops you. Some of the spores stick to your skin and start to itch terribly. You lose two stamina points as great lumps come up on your face and arms and your skin feels as if it is on fire. Frantically scratching your itching lumps, you step over the now deflated spore ball. Pressing on east, you turn left, which heads north for as far as you can see. The footprints you are following start to peter out as the tunnel becomes gradually drier. Soon you are beyond the dripping roof and the pools on the floor. You notice the air becoming hotter and you find yourself panting even though you are walking quite slowly. In a small recess on the left hand wall, you see a section of bamboo standing on its end. Lifting it down, you see it is filled with a clear liquid. Your throat is painfully dry and you feel a little dizzy from the heat in the tunnel. The water in the bamboo pipe is welcomely refreshing and adds one stamina point. It also contains a magical solution which will enable you to be exposed to melting point temperatures without harm. Discarding the bamboo, you start off north again in good spirits. You find yourself dripping with sweat as the temperature continues to rise. As you struggle on, the heat intensifies until it becomes so unbearable that you feel yourself begin to pass out. Although the temperature in the tunnel is higher than you could normally tolerate, the liquid from the bamboo pipe keeps you alive and mercifully, after a few moments, the temperature drops rapidly and soon feels almost cool again. On the left-hand side of the tunnel is a closed door. It has a small iron plate in it which looks like it might slide open. The door swings open into a small room, but before you know what is happening, 
you find yourself falling through thin air. There was a pit behind the door, which you did not see. You land heavily at the bottom and wince with pain, losing four stamina points. The pit walls are roughly chiseled and have plenty of toe and finger holds, so you are able to clamber out quite easily. You curse your own eagerness and tell yourself to be more careful in future when entering rooms. Inside the room, you see two iron hooks on the wall opposite the door. A coil of rope is hanging on one of them. You put it in your backpack, jump back over the pit to leave the room and head north. Ahead, you see that the tunnel turns sharply to the left. You turn a corner and almost bump straight into two fierce looking orcs armed with morning stars and wearing leather armor. You are totally unprepared for them and struggle to ready your weapons. The orcs roar. And as you draw your sword, one of them swings its morning star at you, which, thankfully, crashes into your shield, bouncing off harmlessly. The tunnel is too narrow for both of them to attack you at once, so you fight them, one at a time. The orc is strong and slow, and you're able to strike hard with your sword. Your shield protects you from the orc's frenzied attack, while you're able to hack its leg. You raise your sword to parry the attack, and are able to kick the orc hard. The first orc slumps lifeless to the floor, so you turn your attention to the other. The orc is strong and slow, and you're able to strike hard with your sword. Your shield protects you from the orc's frenzied attack while you're able to hack its leg. You raise your sword to parry the attack and are able to kick the orc hard in the stomach. Inside one of the orc's pockets, you find one gold piece and a hollow wooden tube. You put your findings in your backpack and set off west. As you walk along, droplets of water again start falling from the tunnel ceiling. Heading west, you see wet footprints made by the same boots that you followed earlier. They lead to a closed iron door in the right-hand wall of the tunnel, but do not seem to go any further. 